single end is dumb, but together it seems like they can do amazing stuff. This is emergence, so hold your mind in one piece, because I'm going to show you five crazy examples of emergence and how it works. Let's start by simulating ants. We'll make it turn randomly. Now let's make it move forward in a constant rate. Just to make sure we didn't do anything slow, we need to see if it works with like 5,000 ants. But even though we have a lot of ants, there is no intelligence emerging from this right now, and it's because no two ants are interacting with each other. Like every ant is just individually going around here. So let's add food and the mechanic that allows the ants to turn towards the food. The two red lines are to simulate the laser eyes ants have in real life, but in real life it's actually four and each eye have two, but we're gonna simplify it by adding only one. And the way ants communicate is with pheromones. What you see right now is the nest pheromone. When they are not carrying food, they release this pheromone. We're gonna color it purple until one of them gets food and then it's starting to release food pheromones. And when it's carrying food, it's turning towards the higher concentration of nest pheromones. And when it's searching for food, it's turning towards the higher concentration of food pheromones. And this is enough to cause emergence. Now we're gonna see how together they are going to be a lot more intelligent than only one ant and start to form optimized path to return the food to the nest. I was curious to see if the ants could navigate a maze, and it turned out they can do it very, very well. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. In emergent systems, it's easy to see how parts of the system alone behaves very differently than parts of the system together. And it's the same for all systems with emergence. And in math, this property is named non-linearity. This is particle life. And it's really amazing. We can see life emerging from simple particles. And because it's so pretty, I want to show you one run before I explain what's going on here. So relax and join the next 20 seconds, and then I promise I'll explain everything. Okay, to understand what's going on, let's start with a very simple example where we have only two colors. Let's make every color attracted to its own color. You can see in the left corner, 
a representation of all the rules applied to the particles. And as expected, they just gonna clump up. Then we can do stuff like make red attracted to blue, but blue repel red. This will result with some movement because blue is running away from red and red is like chasing it. Then all we need to do is just add one more color and another color and just randomize the rules each time. I don't know about you guys, but for me it looks exactly like looking at real microbes, like at an episode of Journey to the Microcosmos or something. In reality we can see atoms turning into molecules and molecules turning to life. Each of those stages is named an integrative level. We can't talk about emergence without mentioning Conway's game of life. Even though the base rules are incredibly simple, it has been proven that this kind of simulation can compute anything computable, so pretty much anything in the world. Game of Life is a cellular automaton, which means it's based on those cells or squares here. And it's actually based on four very very simple rules. Rule 1, loneliness. If you have less than two neighbors, you're gonna die of loneliness. Rule 2, overpopulation. If you have more than three neighbors, the cell will die from overpopulation. Rule 3, if you have exactly two neighbors, you're gonna stay alive to the next generation. And rule 4, if you have exactly three neighbors and you are dead, you're gonna become alive in the next generation. And this is actually enough to result in infinite complexity. And people have built crazy stuff in Game of Life. Like in this video, link in the description, someone built Game of Life inside Game of Life. And this is something that I've noticed about all of those simulations. When it's in order, it's boring. When it's in chaos, it's boring. But in the middle, there is the cool complexity. And I feel like almost all emergent simulations are in this area. Those are birds, and it seems like they fly in a pretty complex pattern, so let's try to recreate this behavior. First I tried to AI my way there, but the birds didn't behave very well, so I realized I actually need to think about this one. And after way too much time, it got something to work.
and like the other examples, it's based on three very simple rules. The first rule is that they try to avoid other voids, they try to look away from them. The second rule is that they try to align with them, to look at the same direction. And the third one is that they try to be in the center of all the birds in their neighborhood that are close to them. And by far the coolest and most useful one is AI. AI is just humans understanding how to control emergence and kind of teach the stupid things to behave in a predictable, smart way. But behind the scenes, each neuron or each element of this network is actually in a lot of ways simpler than the ants and simpler than the particles and simpler than the birds we simulated. But the emergent properties of tons of them together is making this technology magic. I had a great time making this video and if you enjoyed it, just press the like button and if you have a minute, post a comment because I really like to feel like I'm interacting with other people when I publish these videos. And one last thing, if you enjoyed this video, I think you would enjoy this video also. It's about making an AI town where each subscriber have its own model and just seeing how they all interact and form kind of a society. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, watch it.